remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel at NDN TV Nigeria. Click on the subscribe button and be the first to get notifications. Three months after the rumored passing of His Royal Majesty Ogyame Ikenwole, the 20th Olu of Wari, the Shakiri Nation on Monday, the 5th of April 2021, formally announced that the monarch had joined his ancestors. The occasion of the formal announcement also paved way for the unveiling of Prince Sholai Miko as the Omoba and Olu designate. His emergence is, however, generating ripples across the entire Wari Kingdom. Hey. With the breaking of three etin ports, followed by 20 cannon shots, the Iashere of Wari Kingdom, Chief Johnson Amashin Rulege, formally announced the passing of His Royal Majesty, Ogame Ikenwale, the 20th Ulu of Wari, who joined his ancestors in December last year. As is customary, the announcement of the demise of an Ulu immediately paves way for the unveiling of an Ulu designate, otherwise known as Omoba. Prince Shola Emiko was presented to the Shekiri Assembly as Ulu designate. He would later be installed as the 21st Ulu of Wari Kingdom. Before this formal unveiling of the Ulu designate, a lot of scheming took place as several groups were pushing and lobbying for their preferred candidate. The only ruling house in Wari Kingdom, Giniwa One, which is saddled with the responsibility of providing a candidate, met, deliberated, and chose Prince Shola Emiko, after which they duly wrote to the five-member Olu Advisory Council, chaired by the Olu Boshere of Wari, Chief Airi Emami. Upon receipt of the letter, Chief Airi, who felt the ruling house did not follow the provisions of a 1979 edict stipulating the requirement and processes for the selection of Anulu, tore the letter into shreds, enveloped it, and returned it to the Giniwa One ruling house. I condemn it in its totality. It was not matured of its position. It does not matter of any civilized and educated person to do that. It is wrong. Led by Chief Ima Okotiebo, the Oloriebi and current regent of Wari Kingdom, the Guinea One ruling house felt insulted by Chief Airi's action and subsequently wielded the big stake. What followed was Chief Airi's suspension as the Ulubushere of Wari Kingdom. Chief Airi Imami. Having exhibited actions and tendencies unbecoming of the position he occupies and having proven himself unworthy of the Lobotere's tool, is hereby suspended from the Morita. When inside the Niger Delta called Chief Airi for an interview to get his reaction on these issues, he declined comment, saying he is in consultation and will address a press conference very soon. However, one of the kingmakers, Chief Isaac Jemide, the Oshodin of Wari Kingdom, describes the suspension of Chief Airi as ultra virus and of no effect whatsoever. In Latin, in law, he said, Nemo da qui non habet. You cannot give what you do not have. You cannot take what you did not give. The person who made the Molugo share was an Olu. It's only an Olu that can take Olugo share from him. I'm standing in front of the Olu's Palace now, which is also known as the Agofen. Uh, and right now, you can see the red uh, and black cloth, which of course uh, signifies mourning. I'm going to go in now uh, and try to locate the chiefs um, and try to determine what the situation is with all the stories we have heard about the selection process being right or being wrong. Inside the Olu's palace, I met some members of the Wari Council of Chiefs in a meeting chaired by the Iashere Chief Johnson Amashun Elege. I asked him to respond to Chief Iris' claim that only the Olu Boshere can crown the next Olu of Wari. 
The Yashere said, consequent upon Chief Iris' suspension as Olubushere, he has lost his rights to perform all traditional duties, leading to the eventual installation of the 21st Olu of Wari. Chief Amashin Rulege is now acting as the Olubushere of Wari and performing the duties of the office. If one person is telling you that he, I, 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 is the one to crown, the one to announce a ledger, it's not true. If I'm not here today, this is the number three man. Chief Gabriel Awala is the Wangwe of Warikidon. If Wangwe is not there, Ojomo, Chief Yaya Pesu, take the leadership. For example, 2015, when our Olu Atuwaje joined his uh, ancestors, there was no Loboshere, no Iyashere, no Wangwe. The number fourth man, Yaya Pesu, the Ojomo, he took over. He did the whole process from the beginning to the end, and nobody queries him. So whosoever is saying that the emergence of our Olu designate is 40, the person is on his own. Prince Shola and Miko have 100% of the Shekri nation support. It's the choice of the people, it's the choice of the God, and the oracle has spoken. It's the choice of the oracle. For opponents of the Olu designate Prince Shola and Miko, they insist that the 1979 edict, which guides the selection process of an Olu, disqualifies him as his mother is of Yoruba origin. According to the edict, for one to qualify as an Olu, his father must be Shakiri and his mother must be either a Shakiri or of Edo origin. Chief Robin Sinario, the Egogo of Wari Kingdom, says the edict was a mistake they are now determined to correct. What has happened is that we are trying to correct the wrong that was done just once, and that was 2015. Our link, our affiliation with the Yoruba and Edo and Benin is inseparable. It is linked together. So it would amount to injustice to exclude a person solely on the ground that that person's mother is Yoruba, a place where we are from. It will be denying our roots. Despite the provision of paragraph 4 in the 1979 edict, paragraph 6 says, Upon consultation of Ifa Oracle, the Oracle's decision on a candidate is final. A paragraph which some of the chiefs say supersedes any provision in the edict. Like the oracle said, said he was king, he has been king from the mother's womb. Also, what Ishakiris find surprising in the 1979 edict is the deliberate attempt to cut off their age-long affinity with the Yoruba nation. I am surprised, very, very surprised. And it's something, you know, when something wants to go wrong, it, should, it goes wrong. Otherwise, this edict will have been amended. The father of a man who has been selected or you know, designated now. So he would have taken steps to amend this thing easily. And nobody would have quarreled with it. You know, because we are, we are, we are, we are, we are people as such, you know, uh -huh. he would have amended it, but he didn't amend it, they amend the law, the law still remains. It is this same uh, provision that disqualified this man now, the designate now, from being, he would have been the Olu instead of the late one. As his own attempt to bypass the 1979 edict, the late Ogame Atuashe II had invoked his right of what the Shekris called affirmation to make a proclamation, including Yoruba tribe, as one of the places an intending Ulu's mother must hail from. The affirmation, especially when not challenged, is binding on all Shekiri people. As if to reinforce his cultural affinity with the Shekiris, Two Yoruba traditional rulers who represented the Oni of Ife traveled to Ode Shakiri, traditional headquarters of the Ishakiri nation, to be part of the unveiling of Prince Shalai Miko as Ulu designate. I'm so happy today that uh, I witnessed um, what the 
chiefs of uh, Ishakili Kingdom did by uh, electing uh, a new um, by elect uh, in person of uh, Prince Shola Emiko. Though the different groups are still squaring up against each other, what is clear is that the train has since left the station. The necessary rites leading to the coronation of Prince Shola Emiko as the 21st Ulu of Wari began since Monday, the 5th of April, 2021. What is now imperative for everyone is a broad-based reconciliation of all parties to ensure a hate-free coronation in three months' time. At any given time in our history, when there is tussle for succession of the Ulu, there is a group called Moje, I agree. And another group that says Moje, I don't agree. But immediately the Omoba, the Ulu designate comes out, is agreed on, all the Moje, Moje, they all come together and we continue with our life. So it's, it's, it's not new. And already that is happening. Reconciliation is going on as we speak. The reconciliation process is already producing results as some chiefs like Prince Omolubi Newuwumi, who had opposed the emergence of Prince Sholai Miko, has now made a U-turn. Since nobody, since nobody grew up to the extent of stopping that process that came up on the 50th, then I'm advising my brothers, my sisters, that we should allow the process to go. A Shakiri-born social media influencer, Freedom Ashekpoi, popularly known as Mr. Jolov, who made several posts against the Ulu designate, is now singing a different song. Omoba Shola Emiko, the Ulu designate of Wari Kingdom. Now push the push me. Yes. But any talk will happen. Forgive me. Forgive me. President Muhammad Buhari and other dignitaries, including the APC national leader, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, have all congratulated Prince Sholai Miko on his emergence as the Omoba and Ulu designate. What is, however, curious is the fact that the governor of Delta State, Senator Ifa Okoa, who has maintained a studied silence on the matter, has neither congratulated Prince Sholai Miko on his emergence as Omoba nor condoled the Shakiri nation on the passing of His Royal Majesty Ogame Ikenwale, the 20th Ulu of Wari Kingdom. As the contending forces in the Shakiri nation try to resolve their differences, the Nigerian people look forward to the coronation of a 37-year-old serial entrepreneur, Prince Sholai Miko, as the 21st Ulu of Wari Kingdom. Inside the Niger Delta, 